Hello and welcome to LearnDigitalDesign.com. This will be the first part of a series of tutorials we're doing on learning to create an avatar image with Inkscape. Visit us on the web at www.LearnDigitalDesign.com. Before we start actually getting into any of the tutorials, I'm going to start out by showing you the finished product. The reason I'm going to do this is because as we move along throughout the tutorials, I don't want you to think that I'm crazy. Because there are several parts throughout the tutorial where it looks like this is not going to turn out that well. So I want to show you the finished product to start off with, give you a little bit of inspiration so that you can see what you have to look forward to as we're going to uh, continue through our tutorials and we're going to start now. All right, well, let's get started here. Now we got our picture here that we're going to start with, and this is a picture of my wife and daughter. And uh, we're going to vectorize my wife. So in order to start, we're going to grab the Busy A tool, or the pen tool, and we're going to trace around the outside of her face. And uh, it's simple tracing. Anybody can do this. You don't, do not need to have any artistic talent to do this. We're just going to trace right around her face. And uh, once we get up around to the ears where it's going to go into the hair, it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered up. you got to kind of think in objects here. And uh, that part's going to be covered up, so we're just going to, as quickly as possible, go around to cover, to close in the object without, uh, without actually uh, trying to trace anything at all. Now we're going to do the hair. And once we get around to the ear here again, this area, we're going to do some path functions later. And we're going to make all this neat. And uh, here around the bottom, you don't need to, I don't, in this particular uh, design, I don't need to worry about that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with this object just by tracing around the outside of the hairline. And um, if you're confused about why I didn't trace anything exactly around the bottom, just hang tight because I'm going to explain all that later. Coming on around, and it doesn't matter here because we're going to, part of this hair is going to go back behind the head, and part of it's going to go in front of the shoulder. And the part that goes in front of the shoulder, we're going to have to make a separate object for that. And this part here is actually going to go, well, it's not actually going to go behind the head either because we're going to cut it off with a uh, difference path uh, function. So. Let's go ahead and close this in. Don't worry if you don't understand what a difference path function is. We're going to go into that in detail later. I'm going to show you everything. I'm not going to skip ahead. not going to go into any fast motion here. Uh, you know, we're just going to do everything slowly where you can follow along and understand what I'm doing. I'm tracing around the eye now. Zoom in a little closer here so we can see. This is... Uh, just the eye opening now. We're not tracing the eyelids or anything like that. You've got to train your mind a little bit when working with vector files to think in objects. And you got to think about which object's going to overlap the others. You got to think about how they're going to interrelate as you're drawing them. And, you know, it may be a little confusing at first, and you're probably going to pull your share of hair out as I did when I started. Um, but just hang in there because before long, you're going to be able to think in objects and it's not going to be uh, any problem at all. You notice now also that I'm using blue lines to do all this tracing and I'm going to explain all that in a minute. First we're going to make this pupil here or the iris I guess you could call it by just using the circle. Now we're going to grab the eye opening we're going to go to edit and duplicate. You can also do control D which I will do in the future then we're going to grab both that and the iris and go to intersection. You grab both by using the shift key. And then an intersection is simply going to only create, it's going to create a new object that's going to only uh, incorporate the area that intersected between the two objects. And it actually deleted the uh, duplicated eye opening. So in deleting that, now we've only got one eye opening left. And now we're just making the pupil and the little eye shine there. I'm going to do another uh, thing here and make the eyelashes. And the way we're going to do the eyelashes is just 
nothing fancy here at all because uh, we're going to be kind of zoomed out we're not doing a real close-up of the eye in this tutorial so uh, you're not gonna you know any real detail here is kind of going to be wasted later on because we're going to be zoomed out especially seeing as how this is an avatar image so let's get that done then we're going to grab the uh, eye opening and we're going to hold shift and then grab the eyelashes as well go to path and difference and difference function is just going to make it so that you can't uh, have any overlapping areas so basically the eye opening just took a big bite out of the eyelash area and trimmed it up nicely we're going to do an intersection now with this one uh, duplicated the eye opening and then grabbed both by holding shift and then went to intersection if you don't understand about some of these path functions it might be worth your time to uh, go play with them a little bit on your own and I do have some other tutorials that are specifically about these different functions so uh, you know if you don't understand them at all it might not be a bad idea to go go uh, learn a little bit um, I accidentally copied something from the clipboard here so deleting that now we're gonna zoom back in and instead of uh, redrawing the pupil and the eye shine I'm just gonna copy and paste them because they are going to be about the same size and if they're not the same size it's just not going to look right anyway so just copy that in now uh, now I'm grabbing this background and I'm going to object properties and lock I should have done this in the beginning but forgot so in locking that your backgrounds not going to slip around and move on you on accident it's totally locked now I cannot select it we're gonna do another intersection now for the other eye after we do well, we're gonna do the lashes first let's do the lashes I told you I was gonna explain why we're using blue and the reason I'm using blue lines is because in the end I'm not gonna have any lines and I wanna use blue lines to start out with so that they're easy to see later and I can just delete them but in, or I'm not actually gonna delete the lines I'm gonna make them not visible with a fill and stroke panel so uh, you'll see how I'm going to do that shortly but don't be alarmed that we've got all these blue lines all over the screen now we're doing a difference here with path and difference get rid of the extra object area on the eyelashes we could have also uh, hidden that area by moving it behind the eye And I skipped ahead a little bit here and I just traced the uh, eyebrows for you I'm gonna try not to do much skipping ahead at all but there are a few places in this video where I accidentally skip ahead some on you uh, because I forgot to press the record key when I started again uh, but it's not gonna be detrimental anywhere where I did it and it would be would have been detrimental I went back and re-recorded so you don't need to worry about that now I'm just simply going to trace these lips out. I'm going to tra trace the top lip, and then I'm going to trace the bottom lip, and I'm going to uh, make the top lip, uh, you know, appear to be over the bottom lip. So that uh, you'll see why I need to do that in a second, because the bottom lip is actually the object itself is going to go underneath the uh, the top lip. <coughs> 